quick. Give him a shout out this morning. He's worthy of all praise this morning. Uh, Sister Gerald, he's worthy. He's worthy this morning. Words can't contain, can't con un describe the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Bo to give a testimony right quick. So this. Can't already talk. Sister Beverly, come here and give a testimony for him. He can't, says he can't already talk. Tammy that was talking, you know, we're just so thankful and grateful because they really, I mean, Sykeson did, they told us that it was best that we come back to Sykeson and they didn't have any hope for both. I mean, some of the nurses came up to the hospital to see and they were just astonished and amazed at what God has done because they said they did not think that they would ever see him awake again. And we just thank God for his many oh, blessings yeah. and his favor in our lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him another hand clap. Give him another hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just play something soft, Brother Guy, if you will. Just play something soft this morning. Let's just worship God for a few minutes this morning and uh, tell him how much you love him this morning, appreciate him this morning. We don't want to beg him for anything right now, Brother Al. We just want to lift up our voices to him and our hearts to him. Let him know how much we appreciate him this morning. We ask enough. We beg enough. But sometimes all he wants to hear is how much we love him, Brother Philly, how much we adore him this morning. I just want you to close your eyes this morning, meditate on him just for a few minutes and worship him this morning. Tell him how much you appreciate him today. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you this morning, Lord. We, Lord, adore you this morning, Lord. You're a miracle worker, Lord. You're the great physician, Lord. Lord, we love you with all that we have this morning, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, there's avenues of wealth and abundance, Lord, and a wealth of all the things we need to be successful and to, Lord, do what we do, Lord, but more than all the benefits, Lord. Lord, we worship the benefactor this morning, the ones that gives us the benefits, Lord, and that's you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we adore you this morning, Lord. Lord, our voices cry out to you, Lord, our hearts, Lord, beat, Lord, to, to be with you, Lord, and to see you, Jesus. Lord, let our mindset be, oh God, Lord, that the very thing we love the most is you, Jesus. Lord, let us lay aside all the things, Lord, that, Lord, hinder our walk, Lord, and distract us, oh God, and focus on you, Lord. Lord, your breath this morning, Lord, your hope, our peace, our refuge, Lord. Lord, you're the peace that passes all understanding, Lord. Lord, you're the calmness, Lord, in the storms of life, Lord. Lord, you're the one, Lord, that can walk us through places, Lord, that nobody else can take us through, Lord. Lord, when the world seems dark and lonely, Lord, you're a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, Lord. Lord, we can't see the way out, Lord. You shine a light, Lord, and let us, Lord, find the way through, Lord. Lord, we just want you to hold our hand, Lord. We want to be with you, Lord, walk with you and talk with you, Lord. Lord, we desire to be with you, Jesus. Lord, we we desire your presence this morning, Lord. Saturate this place, oh God. Lord, saturate, Lord, this auditorium today, Lord. Let our hearts feel you, Lord. Lord, let our hearts sense your presence this morning, oh God. Lord, let our hearts beat fast, oh God, for you. Lord, if it hadn't been for you, Lord, if it hadn't been for you, Lord, where would any of us be this morning, Lord? Lost and undone. Lord, but through the blood of Jesus and mercy and grace, Lord, we're your children this morning, Lord. We're your servants, Lord. Lord, we honor you this morning, Lord, with all that we have, Lord. Lord, we may be like the widow. We may feel like we're like the widow this morning that only gave two mites, Lord. But, Lord, you said she gave her all. She gave her best, Lord. Maybe there's somebody here this morning that feels like they don't have a lot to give, Lord. They don't have a lot, Lord, to put into the service, Lord. But we give all that we have, Lord. We've gave our best, Lord. We've gave it all this morning, Lord. Lord, we lay it down at the foot of the cross this morning, Lord. Our hopes, our dreams, Lord, our successes, our failures, Lord, our hurts, our heartaches, oh God. Lord, but through you we can have all the things we need, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Jireh. You make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, you're our provider. Lord, you're our healer, Lord. Lord, you're our banner this morning, Lord. You're our refuge, Lord. Lord, you are our joy. Lord, you're our help, Lord. You're our hope, our peace, Lord. Thank you.
you, Lord, for your mercies, Lord, endureth forever, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hug somebody this morning. Go to somebody and hug them this morning. Let them know, say, Jesus loves you. Just say those simple words to you. Jesus loves you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it good to feel the presence of the Lord? The Bible says, oh, come and taste him to see that it is good. The Lord tastes good, amen? Sure he tastes good. That's what the word says. If you haven't tasted him, had not tasted of his goodness and his glory, then you need to take a bite. Amen? Amen. The Lord is good. We want to thank you for being here this morning, obeying the Lord. God is good. I said, uh, we've been start the season, season of the new year out praying and fasting and I know God is on the move he's already answered some prayers and uh, me and brother Keith was sharing this morning and uh, different things we believe and anticipating for God to do but just as every time old saying is uh, go up another level fight another devil and the more we pray and fast and the more we seek God and the more brother Dave we, we claim his goodness the more the enemy is going to try to stop us from going forward and uh is there miracles along the way? Yes, there is. Is there answers of prayer along the way? Yes, there is. But for every prayer, Sister Linda, and for every victory win, there's going to be a battle we have to face to get there. Sure there is. You're not going to get nothing for free or something easy just because you're serving God. You've got to fight for it. You have to fight for it. You have to make your mind up. You're going forward with God and not going backwards, but going forwards. Uh, if you have your Bible, and turn to Jeremiah, we're going to start Old Testament this morning. Sister Amanda shared some thoughts this morning to kind of go along with the message this morning. And then me and Brother Keith was talking a little bit this morning for Sunday school. Uh, how many of you have seen the, this old show? And I know most of you have the old, the old show, uh, The Lion King, the, the cartoon. Most of you have, I'm sure. And I can't remember the exact character's name or something, but uh, I, can't, I can't remember the whichever line it was, went to, was it Rakishi? I can't remember the names, I'm, I'm just telling you. Anyway, the one that takes the, the stick or whatever and whacks him in the head. And then he said, what did you do that for? He said, don't worry about it. It's in the past. I remember Timmy just whacks a far out of him. 
<laughs> now, I may get the names wrong, but if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. He comes up and he's talking to him and whatever it is, and all of a sudden he just takes that, uh, Brother David just whacks him pretty hard, and he, he, said, what he said, don't worry about it. Brother David said, it's in the past. It's in the past. <laughs> We're still in the early stages, uh, Sister Karen, of 2019. Early stages of 2019. We still see, haven't seen the greatest of, of what God has for us. And uh, I want to try to share a thought with you this morning. You know, what has happened in the past is in the past, whether it's good or bad. Good, bad, right, wrong, or different, it's in the past. We don't serve a God of yesterday. Yeah, He is the same yesterday, today, and fair, but I don't serve Him on yesterday's accomplishments and yesterday's achievements. But, Sister Lose, I serve Him on today and tomorrow. A part of the, well, oh, let me get going. Let me get going here before I get wound up like an eight-day clock. Uh, this begin to hear. You have to stay with me just a few minutes here. If, uh, for some of you, who's not familiar with our, our church organization. But back in January 1906, a small group of believers gathered in a four-room house to conduct the first our church has what they call the general assembly. Uh, again, just a handful of men. Small house, 1906, uh, got together for the first assembly or gathering. No one could have looked at them and described what was going on. No one could have saw inside them the rich blessings of God that was moving. It was about to transform their lives, about to transform our organization. Uh, no one to describe them in the natural as rich, educated, or even sophisticated. Farmers, sharecroppers, not a whole lot, Brother Chris, of education around any of them, just struggling to get by, but obeying the voice and the call of God, Sister Geraldine, to come together and start a movement. Uh, this organization, I'm not trying to give you history, so just, just stay with me for a few minutes. Uh, they had no formal education, <clears throat> didn't know how to organize a church, didn't know how to conduct church service, didn't know how to put it all together, but they just knew and heard the voice of God. Brother Tim, all they heard was a voice. They heard the calling of God. They heard the wooing of the Spirit to come together and start something fresh and new that they hadn't experienced before. So they, they were just uneducated, unlearned, not trained, but they had something that they were looking for, something they desired that they couldn't find anyplace else. They had a tremendous fire. Everybody say fire. So you need to be on fire. You need to have a fire. You need to, have, you need to be energized. Uh, we should have been jumping all up and down all over this place this morning. Okay, one or two say amen. All right. We should have a tremendous fire. And I'm not talk, speaking of, of a fire of passion, a fire that consumes us. The Bible says our God is, Brother Harvey, a consuming fire. He consumes us. He, he burns in us, Brother Keith. He burns through us. He burns for us. He burns out the impurities and the sins and the things of, this, uh, of life and sins that try to distract us. If we allow him, he'll burn those things out and cause us to be pure and holy and sanctify us. But they had a fire and a passion to hear and to be what God had called them to be. They had a burning desire to know God and not just to know God, but to follow him. They would describe it as we do today. It was described as a Holy Ghost fire, a spiritual fire, a glorious fire. It was a sanctifying fire. It was a holy fire that burned through them, a burning sensation, a desire to be what God had called them to be and to be where God was at. Hello, somebody. It was a fire of God, and this where we're at in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. Jeremiah 29 says it like this. They, then I said, I will not make a mention of him nor speak any more of his name but his word was in my heart as a burning fire what shut up in my bones and i was weary with four brains that it was a fire shut up in my bones that he could not contain he could not stay i want to tell you something uh, we ought to be a fire on in, in us sister Jalen, that burns us that consumes us that we have passion for the glory of god and for his calling on us that shut up in our bones that we can't contain it that we can't control it that it ought to direct our lives to a place that we've never been before these men that came together had ne didn't know what assembly was didn't know what church of god was didn't know anything about a lot of church organization uh, but brother Al, when they got together and the spirit began to move on them and fall fresh uh, they were burned with a compassion of fire like never before uh, hello somebody we need a fire shut up in our bones this morning that we can't contain a fire that would fan us and cause us to move and ignite the world around us 
Organization, now stay with me just a few minutes, I'm going to get off this. Organization would spawn schools and a college, organized churches, not just in the United States, but around the world. History shows that the fire burned in the hearts and swept the world in incredible and immeasurable ways. And as we look back, and each of you here that's been in church long enough, whether you came from another denomination or whatever it is, you have a spiritual heritage. Sure you do. You have a spiritual heritage. You've got, you've got foundation from somewhere, upbringing from somewhere. We might be tempted to say, and this is where, this is where I, I get, get in my crawl right here. <laughs> That's a saying still. Is if we're not careful, and I hear it all the time, that if we're not careful, Brother Larry, all we hear about is the good old days. Um, one or two amens. Oh, the good old days. Boy, if it was just like it used to be in the good old days. Man, if it was just like it was. I want to tell you something. I ain't going back to the good old days. That makes you mad. You need to go find another church. Because, see, the Bible I read doesn't say that the good old days were the best days. The Bible I read says that the latter reign is going to be greater than the former. Hello, somebody. That the greater things, Brother David, aren't behind the church in our past, but the greater days of the body of Christ lay before us. Well, I'll make some of you mad this morning. All right, I'll keep moving. We look back, if we're not careful, we may be tempted to say, oh, those were the good old days. Those were the days. Those were the days. Or, oh, what, the way they used to worship and the way they used to conduct church. Well, guess what? The same God today, yesterday, and forever. God didn't change. If, if anything, you're connected to those days, then you should have brought it into our generation. You shouldn't let it down. Oh, he's making them mad now. You shouldn't let them down. You should, if, if you know what fanned the fire, you should have kept the fire fanned. Oh, hello. Thank you, Brother Chris. If you knew what ignited them, you should have kept the igniter going. No, oh, I'm making him. I'm stepping on. I'll keep going. We're not, if we're not careful, Tim say those, if we're not even careful, we'll say those were the best days. It's not unusual for people to feel that the past was somehow better. The fact is, it's even true in the secular world. Have you not heard farmers talk about how it used to be farming, how it was better farming back in the good old days? Actors, if you hear a lot of actors talk about how it was in the good old days of acting, hello somebody. Politicians will talk about the good old days of politics and how it used to be better. We, we have a tendency for some reason, Sister Lois, to hold on to the good old days in the past. And I think part of the problem is with the good old days in the past is the good old days in the past are secure. They're secure. We know where they're at. We know what happened. And it's easy to backtrack. But the reason, Brother Chris, we don't project forward and project the future because it's unsecure. It's easy to back up and say that's what we used to do. That's how it used to be. That's how it used to go. That's how. But when we step out, Brother, out to the future, we have to step out on faith. Ooh. And brother, if we step out on faith, then we have to trust God totally. We have to trust him for all of our insecurities, all things we can't hang on to, all things we don't have a hold of that we can dictate or we can uh, make happen in our lives. So we have to trust him 110%. And it takes faith to do that. So it's always easy to back up than it is to go forward. The, the, the reason a lot of our churches are failing today is because all they hear is about past tense, pretense and not future events. Oh, okay, okay. I'll keep moving. If we're not careful, we hear it in churches. We hear it from people that they long for the good old days. It's even, in, it's even throughout uh, Scripture. If you have your Bibles, turn to Judges. I want to show some, give you some facts. Judges. Turn to the book of Judges right quick. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. I mean, you know the story of Gideon? Well, it's not really a story, it's history, but Gideon's the words. Notice what Gideon says there. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the, Now notice these great words right here. This should be words of encouragement, words that should have made him jump up and down and, and done backflips and somersaults and just got excited. 
Brother Tim, look what, look what the angel said to him. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, what? The Lord is with thee, thou, thou mighty man of valor. I'm going to tell you something. I heard God tell me that. I, I'd probably jump up 10 feet tall and bulletproof, as old saying goes, Brother Keith. He spoke those words to me or to you, any of us like that, and said, Brother Al, you're going to be a mighty man of God, a man of valor, a man of all these things. Man, wouldn't we, man, we ought to walk around with our chest poked out and our nose up in the air saying, God has blessed me. God is going to do something for me. We ought to get excited and, and stand up and declare up. But look what, look what he says in verse 13, though. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us. Oh, here comes past tense. Here comes, here comes past tense. Why then has all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told of us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us unto the hands of the Midianites. Ain't it amazing how you can change, how, how, how people's brothers and attitude can change on a, on a dime? One minute they're up and everything's good and they get a little bit of bad news and all of a sudden, phew, washed out quicker than it came. Isn't it amazing that one minute we can be on cloud nine and everything's going good, and the, and the next minute we turn around, and Brother Jeff, all of a sudden, it's doom and gloom and agony. Isn't it amazing? Man, the Bible says that a double-minded mind is what? Unstable in all his ways. One minute up, one minute down. One minute in, one minute out. One minute right, one minute wrong. One minute it's left, one minute it's right. One minute God has got the answer to everything. The next minute you can't find him nowhere. Get in here in one verse says, well, you're going to be a mighty man of valor. You're going to be this great person. You're going to be this great man, all this other. Then he begins to tell God all the problems and failures. Well, God, I, I, you know, God, I know how good you brought out. There's a past tense. I heard the stories of how you brought them out of Egypt and all this stuff. But God, look at us now. Don't it sound like some more stories today? Oh, I know, God, you used to do things. But, God, I don't see it now. God, we, we used to do this, but I don't see it now. I don't, the angel told him, you're going to be a mighty man of valor. But he began to look on past tense and, and, and past failures, and he understood the great thing. But he said, Lord, where is it at now? How many of us can identify with Gideon? One day we're up, one day we're down. How many of us have had discouraged in our voice when we talk to God? Let's look at another verse uh, scripture, Psalms 44. Look at Psalms 44. Psalms, the uh, 44th uh, chapter of Psalms. Psalms 44, look at verses 1 and 2. Psalms 44, verse 1 says, We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days and times. There he goes. Well, we've heard all the great stories of days gone by. What work thou didst in their days and times of old. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantest them. How thou didst afflict thy people and cast them out. Well, we heard all the good stories. But look what verse 9 says. Psalms 44, verse 9. But thou hast cast off, and what? Put us to shame, and go us not forth with all armies. If we're not careful, we always allow situations to dictate the power of God in our lives. Tough crowd this one, but Larry, tough crowd. Maybe it's the rain outside, I don't know. But for some reason, we allow things around us, Sister Jim, to dictate the power and the magnitude of what God can do. If everything's going good, God's a great God. We can take on armies, we can take on giants, we can take on anything as long as we're, we're on top of the mountaintop. But Brother Jeff, we get in the valley, all of a sudden our circumstances dictate how big God is in the trial and the fight. God, don't you see what I'm going through? God, don't you see what's going on in my life? God, don't you see what's happened? God, don't you understand? One minute we're up, one minute we're down. One minute everything's going good. One minute we can express how great God is and we can express how we love him. And the very next breath, all of a sudden we're down and out and our sorrows overwhelm us because we can't see uh, old saints past the nose on our face. How about the children of Israel?
God said, I'm going to bring you out. You've been in captivity with the Egyptians all these years. I'm fixing to bring you out and take you to the promised land. And what happened when they got in the wilderness? Anybody know the story? Moses, what would you do? Send us out or die? We were better off back in bondage. We were better off back there working from sun up to sundown, being whipped and beaten, and told when to get up, when to go to bed, and what. We were better off back. Isn't it amazing sometimes that Christians are actually more mm, comfortable in bondage than they are freedom? Whoa. Let me say that again. Isn't it amazing sometimes? That Christians are more comfortable and content being in bondage than they are the freedom that God gives them through the blood of Jesus. And a lot of times when they step out of the bondage and finally get freedom, they don't know how to act. Don't understand it. Don't understand how to accept it, how to work through it, how to flow in it, how to allow God to bless them. And when they step out and have to go forward with faith, they're more comfortable backing up, going where they used to be. I'd rather be in bondage where I know what's going on than be freedom and victory and not know what's going on. I'd rather be back here being told what to do, when to get up, when to go to bed, what to do, than I would have the freedom and faith to work through God and say, God, I'm going to trust you and what I need to do next. Hmm. A little bit tougher. Why? Because the past is secure. And the future's unsecure. They complained. Would rather go back to slavery and bondage. And liked it or seemed to like it. Or wanted to go back better than the freedom. They longed to return to a place where they wept. They murmured. Cried for freedom. And when they got it, they couldn't understand how to work in it. How to walk in it. One place they even talked about stoning Moses. <laughs> That's getting bad. Stoning Moses because of where he brought them to. They blame God. There's other examples. The fact is, spiritual despondency has always been nipping at the heels of God's people, whether it was Gideon, David, Nehemiah, wherever it was at. There's always people that's going to tell you it was better backwards than his forwards. Elijah was a great man, was he not? I may know the story of Elijah. But yet he sat under a tree and wished to die because of his discouragement. Jonah, who preached one of the greatest revivals ever, sat dejected in his little booth under a gourd plant. Why? Didn't like what was going on. Wanted to see God do something else. All these things we can take for example. All these things, we can take one or two choices. Now, this choice is yours this year in 2019. I'm going to say that again. We're just in the early stages still yet, and you have the power to choose. You have the power to go forward in the power of his might and say, this is going to be the best year I've ever had. This is going to be the best year I've ever seen. This is going to be the best year I've ever done anything for God. God's going to do great things and mighty works through me and for us. Me and Brother Keith was talking about this some, uh, this morning and the other night after the ball game. Or you can choose to go backwards where it's comfortable, where it's secure, and do what you've already done. I choose to go forward. I choose to go forward and trust God. I choose to go forward. Listen to me. Even in the midst of all those that think the good old days were better, the days gone by were better, all the past tense was better, guess what? There has also been those who refused and to be confused by their circumstances, choose to believe God and trust God over their present situation. I'll give you some more history. You want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Getting a history lesson this morning, Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Let's see if you can relate to this guy. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Moses. Verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 3. And it came to pass in the four, 40th year in the 11th month on the first day of the month that Moses spake unto the children of Israel according unto all that the Lord hath given him in commandment unto them. How many of you know how old Moses was right here? Brother Harvey's thinking. 
They're trying to put it together. I can see him. <laughs> 120. Senior citizen. Got his AARP card out. <laughs> huh? It's all right to laugh. Senior citizen by many years. Getting ready to pass on the baton, if you will, the torch to the next in line. But yet, Moses at 120 year old wasn't looking backwards. Hmm. What he was doing was projecting to the next generation how good God was. He wasn't sitting back saying, oh, I can tell you some stories. Listen to the stories that he could have told. Okay? He was over, back over 120 years, give or take. He surveys the tremendous history of God's miracles, and then he prays, you've only begun to show us, Lord, your greatness. He was no ordinary leader. Here's some of the things he'd already saw. He saw a burning bush that wasn't burned. He saw a rod turn into a serpent, a leprous hand. He saw ten plagues of Egypt. He saw the Passover angel. Amen. He saw the opening of the Red Sea, crossing over on dry ground. He saw the presence of God on Mount Sinai, received the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God. He saw manna from heaven and water from a rock. If anybody could have stood on the past accomplishments of what God had done, Moses could have said, I've seen it all. I know what God has done. But he didn't say that, Brother Tim, to those that were going on. He said, I know what God can do for you. Don't rely on what I've seen and what's happened in my life. You find God for yourself and trust Him. I've got a foundation to build on, but let me tell you something. What God has for you in the future, children, is better than what I've seen. Moses trying to give him some platform to go forward on. I want to tell you something. What our forefathers have done for us is not a place to sit back on and not build on. What they've done for us is not a place to stay idle on, Brother Chris, but it's something to build forward on. Moses could sit back and say, I'm 120 year old. My time is up. He could reflect it back and say, boy, I've done this and I've done that and I saw this and I saw that and I seen God. Brother David, he did, that wasn't what he was doing. He was telling the children, hey, it's better ahead of you than it is behind you. It's better ahead of you than what you've seen and what you've already experienced. God, I want to tell you something this morning, church. I don't care what you've experienced in your life, miracles, healings, deliverances, children being saved, and, and uh, families coming together and all these things we can build on and say, that's great. But I want to tell you something, Brother Chris and everybody here this morning, what God has in the future is better than you've ever seen. Hello, somebody. What he has in the future is better than you've ever seen. And if you're hanging around somebody and all they can tell you is past history and past years, you need to cut them loose from your circle. Oh, I know that's mean, preaching right there. Cut them loose from your circle. If that's all they can tell you, what grandma and grandpa are doing, how come they can't tell you what God's going to do? See, the reason we're losing a generation in church, and there's, there's different reasons we are, but one of the reasons we are, they never get to hear what God's going to do. All they get to hear is what God has done. Well, that's mean, bro. I know I'm getting mean on them now. They, Want me to resign, Sister Linda, after church this morning. <laughs> All they've heard is the what used to be and how good it used to be. And, how, and they're, not being, in, in, they're not being embedded with how, God, how good God is going to be, what God can do for you, what God is going to do for you, what God is about to do for you. Hmm. They can hear all kind of great war stories, but nothing about the battles that lay ahead. Moses could have sat down, reminisced, and talked about all the things and told all the, all the young people that was going forward about the good old days and the long past, oh, how I'd like to go back, and all oh, that was better back then, but he didn't do that. He didn't try to take them back to yesteryear. He took them to the Ford, what was going to happen to the next generation. He looked back and saw those events were only the beginning of the greater things to come. These events have been God's school for him. He was taught and trained in God's school of hard knocks. He had learned through them that he could trust God completely and trust him with everything. And instead of looking back and saying, oh, this, that, and the other, he looked to the generation ahead and said, it's going to be better for you. It's going to be better. Clearly, most people, I'm going to say this. Clearly, most people die looking back rather than looking forward. Hmm? Where are you in your thinking this morning? If you're a child of the Most High, your better days are ahead of you even when you pass over. 
Hello, somebody. And again, I know it sounds like mean preaching, but it is. I, I, have no, I, don't, I have no desire to leave tomorrow. But if he calls me home, my better days are ahead of me than behind me. Hello, somebody. He calls me out of this old world, I'm better off. He calls me out of this old world, I'm going to a place where there's no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, no more heartache. I'm going to a place where I'll be rejoicing forevermore in the presence of God, Jehovah. But yet we hear all kind of people, Sister John, reflect on going backward. No wonder people don't, and I shared this a few weeks ago on, on I think it was a Wednesday night or Sunday night, one or two. No wonder we don't hear visions and dreams anymore. The Bible says the last days people dream, dream, and see visions. What, what activates dreams and visions? It's going forward and speaking them into faith, getting them into action, getting them moving forward. Nobody wants to step out on faith anymore. Nobody wants to trust God anymore say, I saw this, or, or God showed me this, or God's, God, I believe God's going to do this in my life, or God's going to do this in our church. But we're holding on to what he used to do. Moses could have looked back and said it was better, but he chose to look forward. Even though his life was about to end, he knew the better days were ahead. I started out saying a while ago, in our first assembly together, 1906, guess what? In 1906, there were no memories of past assemblies. Hmm? They couldn't look back and say, boy, I remember what happened back in 1888. Boy, I remember how God moved in 1873. Woo! But the Christian wasn't there. They started in 1906 and went forward. No history. No past results to stand on. No foundation of what God had already done in the organization. You have a chance this year in 2019, you that are here, to move forward in faith and trust God. You can, look, you can reflect backwards and hurt your future. Or you can say, my, future, my past was all right, but my better days lay ahead of me. Isn't it amazing how we talk about our children? We always talk about how good they were when they were babies. Huh? <laughs> we always reflect backwards. Oh, I remember holding him. I remember when we brought him home from the hospital. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? Y'all love them just as much now as grown-ups as did when they were babies. Huh? We don't reflect forward how good they're going to be when they grow up. We should. We should speak positive to them. They're going to be doctors and lawyers and whatever they desire to be. They're going to get an education and, and project for what they can be. My, my children can tell you, I prayed over them every day, still pray over them every day. They, God's going to bless them. They're going to be the best they can be. They're going to do great things. And I always pray that if they put God first, they can do anything they want to. But I project forward. I don't project backwards. My daughter, oldest daughter is about to have a baby. I can't wait. Because I believe projecting forward, she's going to be a great mama. Not looking backwards, saying, oh, I wish she was still a baby. No. I can't go backwards. i got to go forwards. We have to project forward. We have to go forward. We have to go forward with what God has for us. The next generation is depending on you to build a foundation for them. They don't want to hear how great it was 100 years ago. They want to hear how good it's going to be for them. We can't go backwards. There's nothing back there for us. We may build fond memories of good old days. We may have memories and foundations, but we have to understand we can reminisce every now and then and talk about how good it may have been, but it can't be what keeps us where we're at. We have to move forward. We have to remember that we have to go forward regardless of what's going on. Do we look back with regret and longing, or do we face the future with confidence? Let me say that one more time. Do we live looking back with regret and longing, or do we face the future with confidence? There's a strong temptation to say, I want to go back. Huh? Sure there is. Well, if I could just go back and do it over. Well, if I go back and have that time over, if I could go back and change that situation, well, if I could go back and not do this, if I could go back, I wouldn't have gotten involved in this. Or we could go back and say, well, if I could go back, the times were better back then. Life was easier, and this was that, and this was that. And boy, if I could just go back to those days. <laughs> it ain't, guess what? It ain't coming back. 
God hasn't built you for the past. He's built you for the here and now and the future. He's built you to go forward and project how good this, how great he is going forward. Let me, guess what? I'm, I'm trying to close. Church, there's always been a giant in the land. There's always been a giant in the land. David didn't kill the only one. Going forward, there will always be a giant in the land. There will always be a King Herod or a Caesar. There will always be a devil to fight, a river to cross, a multitude to feed, and a mountain to climb. It's always been like that. It'll always be like that. Yet God has always provided a way to slay the giant, cross the sea, or climb the mountain. He's never not provided for us. He's never let us down. He's never let us out. He's never turned his back on us. Every time there's been a mountain, we've climbed it. Every time there's been a river, he's made a way to cross it. Every time there's been a giant in the pathway, he's always, Brother Lay, provided a way to slew him and bring him down. Don't let a giant stop you this year. Don't let a river stop you this year. Don't let history stop you. Don't let past failures and circumstances stop you. But not only that, not let the good old days stop you from going forward, saying they'll never be like it used to be. Guess what? You're right. It won't be. But that doesn't mean God's not faithful in the future. That doesn't mean, Sister Linda, God is not going to provide in the future. Our better days lay ahead of us, church. Our better days are before us. The greatness of God is provided for a lost and dying world and for us to prove it to them. I can't prove nothing to a lost and dying world by talking about how good it used to be. You know what? Sinners don't care what happened 20, 30 years ago. But now they want to know if they can have some help today. Sinners don't want to know they could have got healed 30 years ago in some revival. Some preacher came by and laid hands on somebody and, and they, it was a miracle. I'm not knocking that. I'm not, not don't, I don't say it. But that don't do nothing for a sinner who needs healed today. A family that's tore up and distraught, they won't hear about how 50 years ago a family got put back together by the power of God and, and everything is great in their life. That, that, that's history. They don't want to hear that. We want to hear how can God fix my situation and my family today. They don't want to hear how God blessed them financially 30, 40 years ago. And he made a way and the finances fly. He don't want to, they want to know, hey, I'm losing my job today. The banker's calling tomorrow. Foreclosure's inevitable. They want to know what God can do today. Today. Not yesterday. Not last week or last year, but today. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day of deliverance. Today is our day to shine like we've never shown before. Today is our day, says so you're going to experience the joy of the Lord. Let his light shine in our lives like never before. This world doesn't need a past track record of how good the body of Christ used to be. What they need now is a track record of where we're going and us promoting a vision of where we're going to be and what God can do for them. I'm afraid for too long, brother, day we let them down. Huh? Sure we have. We'll talk about how good it used to be and how, how the church building used to be filled and how the church used to do this and how the church used to do that and how the church used to do this. And they're thinking back, I don't do me no good today. We need to project today. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning, if you will. Don't live in the past. Yeah, we need a foundation. I'm not saying that. We need, we need a, a foundation to build on. We all need that. But you have to build on the foundation. You have to build forward. You have to build going forward. Momentum going forward. Doing things that God wants us to do to go forward. I love history. There ain't a bigger history buff in this church than me. But I'll tell you one thing. I ain't going back. I'm not going back to it. Sister John, God wants to go, us to go forward. 2019, I believe, will be, and Brother Keith already, I wish he could have been in his Sunday school classroom last week, the excitement and the joy he had of, of projecting what he believed God, what God's going to do this year. I hope it rubs off on all of us. I hope it rubs off, Brother David, on all of us. This can be the greatest year we've ever seen. It can be the greatest year we've seen God move in this church and we've ever seen. But it has to be up to you to project it. It has to be up to you to go forward. 
Don't talk about souls that was saved. Talk about souls that are going to be saved. Don't talk about the youth that's moving off. Talk about the youth that's coming in. Don't talk about the drug addicts out there destroying Sox community. Talk about the drug addicts that are going to come in here and get saved and lay all that stuff down and help us build a church. Project where God can go and what he can do. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads this morning, if you will. Nobody looking around this morning. Maybe you're here this morning, you need a fresh vision. Just a, fr a fresh vision of what you want God to do, where you want God to take you this year. Maybe you've been here just relying too much on mama and daddy's coattail or grandma and grandpa's coattail of what the church used to be. Let God give you a fresh vision of what the church can be, what it's going to be, what he desires it to be. I want us all to be successful. I want us all to be triumphant. I want us all to do things we've never done before this year. I want us all to come in with a testimony. Sister Beverly said this morning, Brother Bo, that God has done something great. Brother Keith gave a testimony just here two weeks ago about how his uncle had cancer, now it's gone. Through the power of prayer and fasting. Well, those are just one or two or three drops in the bucket of what God can do and what God wants to do, what he desires to do. But he has to have faith to work. He has to have faith in us to work. I'm going to ask you just to pray for yourself this morning. I always say to pray for that one on each side of you or beside you. But this morning, I want you to pray for yourself this morning. God, what can I do for you? God, what can I be this year? God, where can you elevate me this year? God, I'm tired of just doing the same thing and saying the same thing and going through the same thing. God, I want something new in my life. I want to preach where I've never preached before. I want to sing where I've never sung before, Lord. I want to go places I've never been before, God. I want to lead souls to the cross, Lord. I want to lead souls to church, Lord. I want my friends to be saved. Let me be a light at work or a light in my neighborhood. Those ones I've let down, I don't want to let them down this year, God. Those that, Lord, I, I've looked past, God, because for some reason, Lord, I just didn't feel moved to move on them, Lord, and to talk to them this year, Lord, inspire me to go back, inspire me to build that bridge, inspire me, Lord, to do those things I know you've called me to do. I've let my past stop me, Lord. I, I've done wrong in the past, Lord. I've let you down in the past, Lord. I, I've done things I shouldn't do, Lord, but God, this is a new year and a new start, Lord, and 2019 can be the year, will be the year. I'm going to see the great manifestation of the Spirit in my life. God, I'm going to do it this year. Lord, I want a breakthrough. Lord, I want, I want a, a breakthrough this year, oh God. God, I want to go places and do things and hear your voice and see things go on in our, in our sanctuary that we've never seen before. We want to see the miracles. We want to see those great things of God. God, let it start with me. Let it start with me. Let it start with me. Let that fire burn right now in me. Let that Holy Ghost fire start with me and spread to others. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to do, look back at him, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. Look at him say it. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. No questions asked. Where he wants me to go, I'm going. Brother Tim, he's got something for you. He's got something for all of us. We just got to step out on faith and trust him. We'll be amazed at what he'll do through us, Brother Chris, if we give him a chance. We may sit back and say, boy, I, I didn't think I could do that. You know what? In your own power might, you can't. But when we step out on faith and give him full control and full range of our hearts, there ain't nothing we can't do. Nothing we can't do. Let this spirit fall fresh on you this year. We're still in the early stage. A lot of things to do. We want to hold up our church. Uh, Sister Janie had called this morning. Some of you may have got a text this morning. Her sister, she'd been praying for uh, for the last few months, passed away uh, sometime early this morning. Might have been late last night, early this morning. Sister, I'm not sure exactly when. I think it was early this morning. But uh, Barb was her name. That's where they're at this morning. So uh, I want to remember them. Brother Marty had his uh, uh, knee surgery. Uh, past Tuesday, this past Tuesday, he's doing good. Want to hold him up in prayer. He's in uh, Veterans Hospital in uh, Popper Bluff recovering. Uh, got to go up and see him Tuesday night, and he's doing good. Just process of recovering from knee surgery. Want to hold him up in prayer. Want remember Sister Linda and Brother Tim's family. Pray for them. Uh, Sister Linda's uh, sister went home to be with the Lord. Stepped out this uh, past week. Want to hold him up in prayer that God would just give them strength. Right.
yes. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 That's not looking back. She's preaching going forward. She's better off. That's not going backwards right there. It says, and that's projecting forward, going forward. Amen. That's good preaching. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of all praise. Anybody else? We thank you for uh, seeing our service this morning, for watching us. We hope something was said that stirs your heart and calls you to want to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Word tells us in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to reconcile us back to Him. We just want to pray with you right quick if you'll give us a chance to pray with you. Jesus, Lord, as we come to your throne right now, we just ask you, Lord, whoever's listening today, whoever saw this message, Lord, their heart would be changed and turned for you, Jesus. Lord, they accept you as their Savior, Lord. We ask your blessings on whatever they're going through. Give them strength and a made-up mind to see it through with your help. In Jesus' name, amen. We want you to contact us, if you will. Follow us through heartlandharvest.org or follow us on Facebook. We hope to see you soon in our services. Amen.